Hello and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's begin with the top stories this Saturday evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses rallies in West Bengal, says TMC neglecting dreams and aspirations of the middle class in the state, inaugurates two rail projects in West Bengal. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu calls on journalists to stick to core values of independence and objectivity, urges them to report on developmental and social issues, tells media bodies to create a code of conduct for journalists. Former Madhya Pradesh Police Chief Rishi Kumar Shukla appointed new CBI Director. Appointment made by Prime Minister Modi-led high-powered selection committee. Shukla appointed in place of Alok Kumar Verma, who was removed from the post on the 10th of January. BJP President Amit Shah hits back at criticism of the interim budget, says government schemes are making the opposition nervous as they will benefit farmers and the middle class. And India issues demarche to the American embassy over detention of 129 Indian students in the U.S. External Affairs Ministry seeks immediate consular access, says students may have been duped by agents into enrolling in fake university. Ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, Prime Minister Narendra Modi kicked off the BJP's poll campaign in West Bengal. He addressed two public rallies in the state on Saturday, wherein he launched an attack on the ruling Trinamool Congress as well as the Congress party. He also expressed confidence that the BJP would emerge victorious in the upcoming general elections. Political temperature soared in West Bengal on Saturday as Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed two mega public rallies in Thakur Nagar and Durgapur. Speaking in Thakur Nagar, the Prime Minister launched a blistering attack on West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee, accusing her of orchestrating violence against BJP workers. He said the Trinamool Congress chief had become jittery due to people's love for his party. The Prime Minister accused the ruling Trinamool Congress in West Bengal of killing the aspirations of the middle class people in the state, stressing that his government at the center is bent on fulfilling the dreams of the common man. विकास की पंचधारा यानी बच्चों की पढ़ाई युवा को कमाई बुजुर्गों को दवाई किसान को सिंचाई और जन जन की सुनवाई के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है वहीं दूसरी तरफ पश्चिम बंगाल की टीएमसी सरकार गरीबों के लिए शुरू की गई योजनाओं का लाभ गरीब तक पहुंचने नहीं दे रही बल्कि अब उन्हें रोकने भी लगी है यहां की सरकार ने अब आयुष्मान भारत का लाभ गरीबों को देने से इनकार कर दिया इससे बड़ी संवेदनहीनता इससे बड़ी निर्दयता कोई नहीं हो सकती in West Bengal, the Prime Minister also made a strong pitch for the Citizenship Amendment Bill, insisting it would bring justice and respectability to those who faced religious persecution. Hindustan <laughs> 
जिंदगी वहां भी गुजारा कर लेंगे लेकिन सांप्रदायिक दुर्भावना से वहां पर लोगों पर जुल्म हुए अत्याचार हुए और परिणाम स्वरूप लोगों को यहां वहां अपने अपने उन देशों को छोड़ करके आना पड़ा किसी को अफगानिस्तान से आना पड़ा किसी को पाकिस्तान से आना पड़ा किसी को बांग्लादेश से आना पड़ा कभी हिंदुओं को आना पड़ा कभी सिखों को आना पड़ा कभी जैनों को आना पड़ा कभी पारसियों को आना पड़ा समाज के ऐसे लोगों को हिंदुस्तान के सिवाय कोई जगह नहीं है ऐसे लोगों को हिंदुस्तान में रहने का अधिकार मिलना चाहिए कि नहीं मिलना चाहिए सम्मान पूर्वक रहने का अधिकार मिलना चाहिए कि नहीं मिलना चाहिए ऐसे लोगों का कोई गुना है क्या और इसलिए मेरे प्यारे भाइयों बहनों हम नागरिकता का कानून लाए हैं प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ऑल्सो इनोग्रेटेड टू रेल प्रोजेक्ट इन वेस्ट बेंगाल He launched the electrification of the 294 kilometer long Andaz Santhia Parkour Malda and the Khana Santhia sections. This will ease the transportation of coal, stone chips and ballots to north and northeast India in a seamless manner. Besides the prime minister also inaugurated a 20 kilometer long Hijli Narayangarh line. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. BJP president Amit Shah responded to the opposition's criticism of the budget on Saturday. Addressing the party workers at BJP's Tri Shakti Sammelan in Dehradun, Amit Shah said that the schemes rolled out for the benefit of farmers, workers, and middle class have left the rivals nervous. He said, Modi government's budget will benefit 12 crore farmers across the country, adding that Uttarakhand is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's priority, and urged people of the state to help the party win all five Lok Sabha seats in the upcoming general elections. as they had done back in 2014 mitro jab modi ji ne ghoshna ki chote aur simant har kisan ke bank account ke andar seedha bichole ke bagar salana 6000 rupya jama kar diya jayega tab pure desh ke lagu aur simant kisano mein ek khushi ki lehar pa Amit Shah also addressed the party workers at Gajrola in Uttar Pradesh praising the interim budget Amit Shah said that the tax proposals will benefit the middle class IPS officer Rishi Kumar Shukla has been appointed as the new director of the Central Bureau of Investigation He has been appointed by a high powered committee led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi with Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi and leader of opposition Malikarjun Kharge as its members a 1983 batch ips officer rishi kumar shukla is the former director general of madhya pradesh police he is currently serving as the chairman of madhya pradesh police housing corporation in bhopal shukla has been appointed in place of alok kumar verma who was removed from the post of cbi director on 10th january over corruption charges Meanwhile Congress leader Mallikarjun Kharge has sent a dissent note on the appointment of the new CBI director Kharge said officers without relevant experience of handling corruption cases should not have been considered for the post of the CBI director Consensus has evolved between the government the opposition and other parties on the bills to be taken up for consideration and passage in Rajya Sabha during the ongoing budget session After Chairman M Venkaiah Naidu urged the government and leaders of various parties to sit across the table and decide on the bills that could be taken up, all sides are in agreement to take up key bills. The bills to be taken up during the current session include the Companies Amendment Bill 2019 to replace the ordinance, the Trafficking of Persons Prevention, Protection and Rehabilitation Bill 2018, the Arbitration and Conciliation Amendment Bill 2018. the new delhi international arbitration center bill 2019 the personal laws amendment bill 2019 and the aadhar and other laws amendment bill 2019 the rajya sabha is likely to discuss the motion of thanks to the president during 4th to 6th february and the interim budget on the 7th of february till the 11th The house is expected to take up the agreed upon legislations during 12th and 13th February. 
Goods and services tax collections have crossed 1 lakh rupees crore for the month of January, of which CGST is over 17,000 crore rupees, SGST is over 24,000 crore rupees, IGST is over 51,000 crore rupees, which includes 24,000 crore rupees collected on imports, and CES is over 8,000 crore rupees, which includes 902 crore rupees collected on imports. The Ministry of Finance said that the increase has been achieved despite various tax relief measures implemented by the GST Council to lower the tax burden on the consumers. The government had earlier this month ruled out any further cuts in GST rates until revenue collections improve. This is the third time in, in the current fiscal that revenues from GST have crossed 1 lakh crore rupees mark. In April and October as well, the collections surpassed this milestone. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said the time has come for the media bodies to create a code of conduct for the journalists. Addressing the gathering after inaugurating the Golden Jubilee celebrations of the Kolum Press Club in Kerala, the Vice President said journalists must stick to the core principles of journalism like independence and objectivity. He also called upon the journalists to shun unhealthy practices like sensationalism. He also urged the media organizations to focus more on social issues like women's safety, rural-urban divide, climate change, poverty, agricultural challenges, etc., instead of focusing on negativity. Sensationalism is the order of the day. Sensationalism means senselessism. You have to understand that. There has to be sense and simply competing for headlines. And these headlines should not become deadlines for us because the main line is missing. We have to carry the line of the public interest. Information with confirmation is more than an ammunition to fight against injustice, to fight against corruption, to fight against tyranny, to fight against discrimination. We must have the information which has got a confirmation. And the Vice President also emphasized on the need to encourage the use of mother tongue in education and said it should be made mandatory. Inaugurating the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of Sacred Hearts College in Kochi, the Vice President said there is need to promote regional languages in higher education and research. Education is for enhancement of knowledge. Education is for enlightenment. Education is for empowerment. Finally, education is for employment. Unfortunately, we are looking into reverse now. We have to understand this. Education is for enlightenment, for enhancement of knowledge and empowerment of individual. And then, of course, for employment also. That's why we have to focus on developing an integrated human personality among the student community and we teach them all the academics. Education should aim at holistic development of an individual. Time for a very short break, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Do stay with us. A labyrinth of hundreds of narrow stairway passages is a significant and historical component of what you popularly know as Bara Imambara. Some of these narrow stairways have dead ends, some end at precipitous drops, while others lead to entrance or exit points. Historically, Bhul Bhulaya was constructed to confuse the enemy intruder and the narrow lanes of the labyrinth can make anyone feel lost. The structure contains various strategically built hollows in the corridors.
Welcome back. You're watching News Tonight. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Jammu, Srinagar and Leh on Sunday to inaugurate several development projects. The Prime Minister will lay the foundation stones of two All India Institutes of Medical Sciences in Vijaypur and Avantipura. The Union Cabinet had recently approved setting up of the premier hospitals in the border state. Setting up of new aims is expected to transform healthcare facilities, health education and training in the Jammu region. The Prime Minister will also lay the foundation stone of Northern Regional Centre Campus of Indian Institute of Mass Communication in Jammu. The University of Ladakh will also be launched by the Prime Minister. It will be the first ever university in the Ladakh region of the state. It will be a cluster university comprising degree colleges of Leh, Kargil, Nubra, Zatskar, Dras and Kalsti. Besides, the Prime Minister will also digitally launch various projects under the Rashtriya Uchutar Shiksha Abhiyan. He will unveil plaques via video conference to lay foundation stones of 54 new model degree colleges, 11 professional colleges and one women's university in the country. He will also inaugurate 16 model degree colleges and 66 entrepreneurship, innovation and career hubs in the country. In addition, the Prime Minister will also lay the foundation stones of three model degree colleges in Kishtwar, Kupwara and Baramula in Jammu and Kashmir. The Prime Minister will also declare 100% electrification of households in Jammu and Kashmir under the central government's Sobhagya scheme. The foundation stone of 624 megawatt Kiru hydroelectric project in Kishtwar will also be laid by the Prime Minister. It is a run-of-the-river project across the Chenab River. Besides, the Prime Minister is also scheduled to inaugurate the 9-megawatt Dah hydroelectric project located in Dah near village Datang. This project is a run-of-the-river scheme. A 220-kilowatt Srinagar, Alustang, Dras, Kargil, Leh transmission system will also be dedicated to the country by the Prime Minister on Sunday. The foundation stone of this prestigious project was laid by Prime Minister in August 2014. The Prime Minister will then lay the foundation stone, a 1,640-metre span, double-lane bridge over the Chenab River in Sajwal. The project will provide an alternative route for the population of Sajwal and Indri Patyan. With the completion of this bridge, the distance between Sajwal and Indri Patyan will be reduced to 5 kilometres from 47 kilometres earlier. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh said on Saturday that the centre will use technology to seal the international borders of both West Bengal and Assam with Bangladesh. Addressing a rally in Alipurdwar district of West Bengal, the Home Minister said sealing of borders will be done through an integrated border management system. He added that the centre has sought land from the West Bengal government to erect fencing to seal the border with Bangladesh, but is yet to receive the land. Rajnath Singh stressed that the move will help prevent infiltration as well as smuggling. It will also ensure safety and security of the country. हम यहां पर सारे बॉर्डर पर फेंसिंग लगाएंगे यहां पर तार लगाएंगे अब चार चार चौबंद यहां पर जो उसमें करेंगे लेकिन किसी अवैध घुसपैठिए को भारत की सीमा में प्रवेश नहीं करने देंगे एंड इन सम अदर न्यूज़ रॉबर्ट वाड्रा हैज बीन ग्रांटेड प्रोटेक्शन फ्रॉम अरेस्ट टिल 16th फरवरी Delhi's Patiala House Court granted interim bail to Wadra on a personal bond of 1 lakh rupees in a money laundering case registered by the Enforcement Directorate. Special Judge Arvind Kumar also directed Wadra to appear before the Enforcement Directorate on the 6th of February and cooperate in the investigation. The case relates to allegations of money laundering in the purchase of a London-based property worth £1.9 million, which is allegedly owned by Wadra. Wadra's close aide, Manoj Aroda, was granted interim protection from arrest till 6th February in the same case. In a fresh development in the Augusta Westland case, 
A Delhi court on Saturday extended the ED custody of lawyer Gautam Khetan, an accused in the Augusta Westland VVIP chopper scam. This in connection with a fresh case of alleged possession of black money and money laundering. The Enforcement Directorate said that there was material evidence and reasons to believe that the accused has committed the offence of money laundering, punishable under Section 4 of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The ED said that Khetan's custodial interrogation was required to identify all tainted money at the earliest. Khetan was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate on 25th January under the PMLA. He is already being prosecuted in a case related to Augusta Westland, in which he was granted bail. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and her team are giving top priority to the 129 Indian students who have been arrested in the United States for enrolling themselves in a fake university. The Indian Embassy in the US has opened a 24-7 hotline to assist the Indian students arrested by the American authorities in what is being called the Pay and Stay University Visa Scam. The two hotline numbers 202-322-1190 and 202-340-2590 are being manned by senior embassy officials around the clock. The arrested students, their friends and family members can contact the embassy at cons3.washington at mea.gov.in. The Indian Embassy has appointed a nodal officer to handle and coordinate all issues related to helping Indian students affected by the busting of the pay and stay racket run by a group of Indians that has put some 600 students under trouble. As many as 129 Indians are among the 130 foreign students arrested for enrolling at a fake university, allegedly to remain in the United States. The university in Detroit's Farmington Hills was part of an undercover operation by the Department of Homeland Security designed to expose immigration fraud. And in some other international news, Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Saturday that Russia has suspended its obligations under the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. Now, this comes one day after President Donald Trump said that Washington was starting a process to withdraw from the agreement in six months. Putin met in Moscow with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu to discuss Russia's reaction to the long-expected uh, long United States move. He said that Russia would no longer initiate talks with the U.S. on disarmament. Putin also said Russia would seek to develop medium-range missiles in response to what he said were similar projects in the U.S. European leaders, meanwhile, have voiced fears over the consequences of the treaty's demise and called on Russia to address concerns before the United States formally leaves in August. Moscow and Washington have long accused each other of violating the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Agreement, which was signed in 1987 and resolved a crisis over Soviet missiles. And that's it from us in this news bulletin. Thanks very much for your time.